Now being hypocritical. Does that make you feel better, sir? Does it make you feel better? As we continue to lift up the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, that Christ has come to save sinners, of which we are all born sinners by our very nature, I turn to the Psalms in chapter 2 and it says, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing saying let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the, la in the, in the heavens my friends referring to God he who sits in the heavens laughs and the Lord holds them in derision so why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in envy why so much hostility to the Word of God? You see, my friends, I've heard it said many times today that it's wrong for someone to judge. And by making that very statement, those individuals who are saying it is wrong to judge fail to realize their illogical argument that they themselves are making a judgment. Period. <laughs> You see what I mean? It said we cannot judge nobody, only God can judge. That in and of itself is a judgment. It's a judgment. But this is what happens when one leaves the wisdom of God, leaves the truth from the Word of God, and believes a lie. This is what happens when one stays in their rebellion against the God who has created them. The God they know. Because the Bible says there is no such thing as an atheist. Everyone knows that God exists, but they suppress that truth in their unrighteousness. Because of their unrighteousness, because of their sin, because of their idolatry and blasphemy and fornication and lying and stealing, because of their sin, they suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. So why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? Because they hate God. They hate the very God who has created them. The very God that they will stand accountable to on that day of judgment. Like this young lady here, who earlier kept trying to block me and drown out the truth, but yet her conscience bears witness to the truth, and you cannot silence that which is already written upon your heart. Because the Bible says that God's moral law is on the heart. Even those who have not been given the law, they show by doing the deeds of the law that it is written there. They know that it is wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to lie. You know it's wrong to steal. Would you steal from your neighbor? Would you take something that doesn't belong to you from your neighbor? You would? And you love lying? You love lying? You love committing adultery? You see, you're doing exactly what the Word of God says. That God turns you over to a debased mind to do that which is unnatural. To suppress that truth and in unrighteousness. Because you love your sin. Now, sir, I know you're doing it as a mockery of God. You're doing it as a mockery of God. But the Bible says that God is not mocked. You do reap what you sow. And all of those words that you just said in your mockery towards God, you, sir, will give an account to Him on that day of judgment. The Bible says that you will bow the knee before Him on that day of judgment. So when people come and they say that it is wrong to judge, they themselves are making judgments. Look at the love of God that these people display by spitting on someone. 
You see, the Bible tells us that you suppress the truth in your unrighteousness because you love your sin. So why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? Because like this man, they hate God. This man hates God, and therefore he comes and mocks and blasphemes the very God who has given him life. The very God who is holding your breath in his hand. You see, the Bible says you will stand before him on that day. You see the mockery. Every word, every deed, every thought will be held captive to God. And you will stand before Him without an excuse on that day. You won't be able to say, I did not know. You won't be able to say that it doesn't really matter because, hey, you're a God of love, therefore you're not going to judge rightly. Wake up from what, sir? What is your standard of truth? What is your standard of truth? Do you have a standard of truth? Do you think majority? Do you think majority of this, what's out here you see, dictates truth? Do you think, do you think majority dictates truth? So we're out here in the minority. You are all out here in this majority celebrating and having pride, which the Bible says comes before destruction. Do you think that this, this, what is your authority? What, by what basis can you say that what is true is true? Do you think that the majority of people that are in agreement with you make something true? It does? Does it? So when this country said it was okay for slavery, and in the majority they said that, is it true by your standard? By your standard, is it true? Is it true by your standard? The Bible says slavery, it depends on what you mean by slavery. It depends on what you mean by slavery. You know what the Bible says in Deuteronomy about those who steal a man and take them as a possession for their own property? The Bible says that man is to be put to death for stealing a man because life is valuable. So when you make those kind of claims and comments, you really should understand what slavery meant in the Bible. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Where does it say it? Where does it say it? Okay. What else does it also say in Leviticus? What else does it also say in Leviticus? You see, you see, people will love to come and throw out things about what they think the Bible says, but they don't actually know. So if you want to, based on what, sir? Is it wrong to judge? Is it wrong to judge, sir? Is it wrong to judge? You see, you can't, you can't hold a logical conversation. You can't have a rational dialogue. You know why? Because when you give up the mind of Christ, when you don't have the mind of Christ, you're left with absurdity. You're left with absurdity. It's, it's God or chaos. It's God or chaos. Is it wrong to judge? That's what I'm asking you. Can you give me an answer? Is it, is it wrong to judge? Yes. Yes or no? Yes? Why are you judging me for telling you about what the Word of God says then? That's a judgment. I know I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you understand reasoning. I'm trying to help you understand logic. But when you make a judgment about me judging you, you're contradicting yourself. You're being hypocritical. Does that make you feel better, sir? Does it make you feel better?